What's going on guys? Today we are unboxing a rare Japanese swim bait, the Tiny Clash. This is a collaboration by DRT and Working Class Zero. Let's go. Alright guys, so we have finally got our hands on a Division Rebel Tackles Tiny Clash and they are elusive. We've been hunting for one of these for quite some time. In the swim bait world, these things are highly renowned, very well known, especially the Clash 9, their nine inch model. This is the Tiny Clash, the 6.6 .6 inch swim bait by DRT. In a new color, the Joy Thief, put together in collaboration with Working Class Zero and DRT, and it is a beauty. So what we are gonna do today is unbox this, talk about some of its features, talk about what gear we recommend throwing it on, and then of course showcase it in future videos, fishing under water footage, things of that nature. So be sure to subscribe and hit notifications if you're interested in those videos as well. So first and foremost, how did we acquire this? Uh, we got this from the Working Class Zero website. We've signed up for their email newsletter, which I highly recommend you guys do if you are looking for any of the Working Class Zero baits, but then also I hear they plan on doing another launch of this exact same line in April or May of 2021. So sign up for that email newsletter if you like this color here. I'll tell you why you might wanna do that. We paid $108 for this guy from Working Class Zero. eBay is one of the only places you might be able to find some. And some colors I saw up to $500 asking price. And I'm sure people are paying that. So when you get an opportunity to hop on this for the MSRP of $89 plus tax plus shipping, 108 bucks, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Eccentric joint baits. It's low floating. We'll talk about that here in just a minute, but look at the packaging, man. It's actually sick packaging. I can't read any of it on the back. It's all in Japanese. So we're just gonna go ahead and try and be as careful as possible here and get this guy opened up for y'all. Pretty stoked to finally own a DRT bait. You guys know if you watch our videos, we recently expanded into DRT's line of products with the DRT varial handles. We've got the 110 millimeter sizes on Devin and I's Tranks reels. And these are also a, a collaboration with Working Class Zero as far as the knobs go. This is a Working Class Zero design. And we also have some new knob colors that we just picked up. We're gonna talk about in a future video. These three sets right here cost 200 bucks. More on that later. But we finally got a DRT bait. So here we go. Ooh, man. This thing is regarded as one of the highest engineered swim baits on the market and for good reason. So let me tell you about it. It's literally like a piece of art right here. So sick. Hardly makes you want to throw it, but she ain't going to be no garage queen. We are going to catch fish. I'm going to put this thing in jeopardy to try and catch some true giants. By the way, the Clash models like the Clash 9 has caught so many teen sized bass. It's ridiculous, and that's why they came out with this smaller size. To put that into perspective, I've been fishing three and a half years now or so, and I have not even caught a fish until this year that was half that size. I recently caught a seven pound largemouth bass on a bait about this size and uh, just with one joint, very similar. Not quite as slick, but I know there's an easy way to do this, but I'm making it harder than it really has to be, I'm sure. Shout out to whoever put this together because it is confusing. Success! Wow. Oh. So that tail really swivels. I mean, that thing, she almost hits a 45 right there. By the way, you can get this thing to do like 180s in the water right here when working it certain ways. Take a second to just soak it up. I mean, that thing is fresh. Okay, so now that we have it out of the box, sharp hooks, by the way, these are owner hooks. I think it's like ST46. This is where I'm gonna sound like a rookie. ST46 hooks, and I think the front is a size one and the rear is a size two or vice versa. One of those hooks is slightly larger. Uh, regardless, I'm just gonna throw it on this stock hardware. Plenty good enough for me. I've heard some guys will swap out the split rings. The fact of the matter is when you're throwing big baits like this and there's potential to catch those true giants, those trophies, just like anything else, if you're throwing your jig, your Texas rig, etc., you want to make sure you're throwing the right gear to actually land that fish, right? So some folks I do hear might switch out those split rings right there between the bait itself and the actual hooks. And so that is something you could look into. I think I heard, uh, 
owner hyper wires are some good ones, but don't quote me on it, do your own research. I'm gonna throw it as is, and I'm sure we'll be just fine catching some giants. But what makes this bait so unique to the marketplace is the fact that it has a removable lip. So this guy dives down from like one to six feet is what I hear, and we'll, we're gonna test all this, and I'm sure you could even find some more information online. But it dives down to about six feet, and you almost can work this thing like a crankbait, and the tail is also removable, and there's multiple positions so that you can get this guy to really kick more left to right and have an erratic swim or you can almost have more body roll and uh, it looks like a tighter swim based on the videos I've seen. So as you can imagine, I'm very excited to throw this and hopefully not lose it. Literally $100 down the drain if you lose this bait right here. So it is gonna be a little sketchy. That's why I'm gonna talk to you guys about some of the line and knot techniques I'm going to utilize whenever throwing this bait so that we have the highest, the lowest possibility of losing it, but anything can happen. So with the fact that you can pretty much tear this thing apart and piece it back together comes the question, if you can just easily remove this bill and pop it back in place, how are you not just gonna lose it or break it and it's gonna pop off as you're fishing it or when a fish goes to grab this bait? And that's a question I have too, but I have a lot of friends who use these, swear by them. I've seen lots of videos, I've done lots of research at this point, and it sounds like these things are not going anywhere. And let's see how easy it is to take this thing out. So I'm just gonna kind of grab it from the side here and I'm gonna give it a little twist. And maybe it comes out, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, I've never done this before. I'm trying not to wreck myself with these hooks. It's, it's in there pretty good. This is like the initial twist off. Wow, I'm applying some pressure. Am I going the wrong direction? There it is, okay. So there it is without the bill, and we'll talk about why you might fish it like this, but let's now try and put it back in and see the process. I believe you just kinda clip it in there and then apply a little pressure from the top. And uh, I think it's locked in, but it looks like there's a little gap. I'm gonna, yup, there it goes, it clicked. So you got a nice audible click, and you know it is locked in, there's no space, no gaps and this thing is ready to fish now as a diving bait. So let me showcase the tail real quick and how you can take it apart and flip it over because essentially you could have this tail faced up which is considered mode A, or you could have it facing down which is considered mode B. So let's try and take this off. Again, for the first time ever, never messed with these baits before and another question you might have is, well, what if the tail just comes out while I'm fishing it? DRT says that this tail is gonna last you the lifetime of the bait under regular use. So let's see what we got here. Trying to be nice and easy with these hooks, right? So you can see there's a little bit of an angle to that tail if the camera is not just focused on my face right now. And so you can have it angled up or angled down. So as it shipped, it was angled up in mode A. I'm going to now face it down. We're gonna try and slide it up into mode B. Okay, yeah, pretty easy, nice and smooth. I don't feel like it locked into place, but it's definitely in the body and not going anywhere, so that is facing down. So from a lot of the research I've done, it seems like the most common way to fish this bait is with the lip in and the tail facing up, which is gonna give it a nice side-to-side -side swim in the water, and you just treat it essentially like a crankbait, and you're either deflecting off cover like rock down at the bottom, or you're just skirting this thing right above the top of grass, but there's also the tail down, which is mode B with the lip in, which looks like an underwater footage to give it almost more of a body roll and kind of a tighter swim. Again, this is from the videos I've watched, but you're gonna see the real first impressions once we get this thing out into the water and we'll film some underwater footage ourselves. So, a little bit more side to side in mode A, a little bit more body roll and tight wobble in mode B is what I'm thinking. Let's try and take that lip out once again, much easier. Now there is no lip in the bait. Take a second to let the camera focus there. Now I think this without the lip in is gonna be some of the most fun ways to catch fish. What I've been seeing, I wanna say once you have that lip off and the tail up, you can treat this much like a topwater walking bait or like a glide bait, just staying subsurface, slow cranks to the reel, twitches of the reel. Some people will pop it with the rod and they'll walk the bait. And I keep seeing frequently in multiple different videos, people calling it a dead walk. I don't know if that's something that folks have just coined because of this bait or if that's actual the term for it. But when they walk this bait, they call it the dead walk. So dead walk and it looks like this, just small rod twitches. It sounds like you don't need to be going crazy like a jerk bait, just small rod twitches and kind of reeling it in steadily as you go. I've even seen people get that same look and walk out of just real twitches. So something like this right here might get that same effect with this bait. And then in mode B, with the tail facing down, it sounds like you can get this guy to do even a full 180 
when you're fishing it a little bit closer to the surface. Now this is a low float, so it looks like half the body almost stays above the water column. The tail and the back of the body almost kind of sticks out a little bit and the nose just kind of stays subsurface. So as you work this, it's either right there on the surface just waking at the top or if you work it what seems to be a little bit faster, you can get it just subsurface a few inches, really get this thing moving erratically without that lip in there close to the surface and get some insane strikes and that is exactly what I'm looking forward to. On top you've got that darker coloration, you've got the DRT and Working Class Zero logos, indications on top, it is the Clash 6.6 .6 inch model. You've got this sick like silver finish that's gonna get a lot of flash in the water. The eyes are literally lifelike. You've got exceptional looking gill design. The thing is absolutely a piece of artwork. Single jointed swim bait, so it's not multi-jointed. Lately we've thrown some stuff like the Mike Buka Bull Shad. This is a multi-jointed swim bait. This one right here is a fast sinking bait, entirely different, but just something to show in comparison. A lot of folks are also familiar with the Buka Bull Shad. So now that we've talked about the hooks, the lip, the tail, the detail of this bait, let's go ahead and talk about the gear we're gonna throw it on. I, for one, am gonna be throwing it on this Tranks 90% of the time. So this is my Tranks 201, which just is left-handed. It's the Tranks 200 size. Again, with those aftermarket DRT varial handles and working class zero knobs and 20 pound Abraze X fluorocarbon line. I also hear that when you throw this bait on fluorocarbon, you might just get an ever so slow sink out of it. So we'll see if that is the case or if it just stays up high in the water column despite the fact that we throw it on fluorocarbon, which is a little bit more dense and will actually sink in the water as opposed to something like braid or mono. I'm not gonna throw this on braid and there's plenty of guys who throw swim baits dedicated and do throw braid. Here's my reasoning behind it. Whenever I cast this thing out, you're gonna be flinging this thing, right? You're gonna be using heavy rods, probably longer stuff than you're used to, capable of handling a two ounce bait, throwing it all day. So what happens when you were to get a bird's nest with straight braid is that boom, dink, no stretch, your knot could fail and you could literally lose the bait. Now, of course, this one floats. If you're fishing from a kayak or boat, you don't have much to worry about, but maybe you're fishing a large pond or you're fishing from the bank. You're gonna have to do some swimming to go catch this thing. And if it were not a floater, it would be gone in an instant. So I prefer to throw on floral carbon with the little bit of stretch that it does have. So if I get a bad bird's nest, there's a chance that that stretch helps take some of the pressure off of your knot that you've tied to the bait, and there's a good chance you won't lose it and your knot won't fail. With that being said, I'm gonna tie a Palomar knot. I have a video on how to tie Palomar knots as well, so if you wanna check that out, feel free. That is my knot of choice, and 20 pound is kind of my regular for larger swim baits. If I'm throwing something like in the three to four ounce range, which I have a handful of baits, I might do 25 pound fluorocarbon, but I usually will not drop any lower than 20 pound because these baits are in a different caliber when it comes to the expense, and I'd rather have the lowest chance possible of losing the bait using lighter gear. So the 20 pound gives me peace of mind versus something like 15 or in that area. Now back to the Tranks because I only talked about it briefly. I'm gonna have this link down in the description. It is absolutely my favorite swim bait reel. And this is the HG model. It's a 7.2 to 1, which means the spool turns 7.2 times for every full turn of the handle. I believe that's changed now that we've gone after market with the DRTs. But this thing is built to throw the big baits with increased gear sizes and it can really handle the pressure and stress of large fish. So I really can't recommend the Shimano Tranks enough. Again, it is linked down in the description. Now, when it comes to the rod, with my limited stock of rods that are capable of throwing these larger baits, I have some with fast tips. Now, when you're working with treble hooks, you want a little bit of a slower taper. You want a little bit of a slower tip. That way you can really keep these smaller hooks pinned. What you want is a little bit of flexibility in that rod tip or a rod with a nice parabolic bend to it. That way it keeps tension whether those bass are shaken and giving the line some slack or not. That rod is gonna bend and cater to it so there's always a tight line with no slack, least chance of those fish coming off. So think about that when you're going to purchase a rod for these baits. This one right here is a St. Croix Mojo Bass Swim Bait Rod. It is a 710 heavy power fast action. So some people would say that fast action tip is gonna be a little too much, but I'll throw it until I get something maybe more dedicated to these larger baits with treble hooks. And this rod is good for baits from one to four ounces. At least that's what it's rated for. You could probably even get away with a little bit more but uh, that is up to your discretion. And luckily the Tiny Clash falls into the two ounce category. And with that being said, we have literally covered most everything you can in an unboxing video about this bait. You guys have heard about how exclusive and expensive these baits can be. There is also the Clash 9, which is the bigger brother to this bait. And then there is the Ghost, the top tier. The thing is like an eight ounce 
bait. I don't even know if I have a rod capable of throwing it or not. I believe it's literally like a foot long bait and eight ounces. So look, if we can get this video to 1000 thumbs up, tell your friends, get them over here to watch and click the thumbs up button. I'm going to purchase one of those. I think they're going for $500 minimum on eBay. But if we can get this video to a thousand likes, I will grab one and we'll showcase it. We'll do an unboxing and we'll fish that one as well. Think about something like taking a 12 inch bait and trying to catch a fish out of a pond on it. That would be something crazy. What might even be crazier is maybe taking the DRT ghost to a place like Lake Fork literally known around the world as one of the top bass fishing lakes in the country. I could see some awesome content coming from a DRT ghost and Lake Fork. Let me know where you guys want to see me throw this guy. And before you click off of here, don't forget to drop that thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to be showcasing these knobs coming up very soon. I cannot wait to throw all this stuff together. We'll see you guys on the future episodes. Until then, peace out.